Hello, thanks for watching. If you've never touched SolidWorks before, or if you're just getting started, you're in the right place. In this video, we're going to touch on some of the basic principles of modeling and designing in SolidWorks. In SolidWorks, we have three types of file. We have a part file, an assembly file, and a drawing file. I'll go ahead and double click on the part file icon to get started. Now we'll see the part files are the basic, the center of our designs because part files are used to create assemblies and then a, either a part or an assembly is used to create a drawing. Now in, uh, in a part file we have our model made up of features and features can be defined in two categories either applied features or sketched features. Obviously sketch features need a sketch and applied features do not. I'll go ahead and jump in and start creating a sketch. Now two ways I can create a sketch. I can either just push the sketch button or if I exit out of that I can select um, to create a feature that requires a sketch. Now SolidWorks is telling me you have to have a sketch first. So I'll go ahead and start with the most basic example and that's by pushing the sketch button. I'll select the front plane to start my sketch and you can see in the status bar that it's telling me edit sketch. That's the mode I'm in currently. Also we can tell by this up here. This confirmation corner gives me the option to either exit without saving the changes or to exit the sketch and uh, when I can see this icon, this exit sketch icon, obviously that tells me I am in edit sketch mode. I'll get started with a line. Now again, I'm sketching on that front plane that I selected, not in 3D space. And there's two ways to create a line. I can either click and hold down my cursor, drag, release, drag, release, or I can just click release, click release, click release, click release. And that will continue the line command until I either push escape, right click, choose select, or until I end the line on another line segment, closing that contour. I'll go ahead and click, drag, to delete by pressing delete on my keyboard. I'm still in edit sketch mode. I've just deleted all my geometry. Now the next thing I'll use is the rectangle tool. You'll see a lot of tools up here. Circle, spline, ellipse, and a lot of these work a lot like the line tool, but we'll save those for a later lesson. I'll start my first rectangle by clicking, releasing, and then click again. Now you'll see these green flags have popped up. What those are are automatic relations. One thing about a rectangle, by default, um, it will add these horizontal and vertical relations if I have selected this rectangle, corner rectangle type. Now obviously I have some other rectangle types. I can define a rectangle by choosing its center and then its corner. I can choose a rectangle by point, point, point and you'll see the um, the icon there is very descriptive on which kind of rectangle each option will create. By pressing escape I can exit that rectangle tool by pressing delete um, after selecting those rectangles I can go ahead and get rid of them. Now at this point I'm going to add my first intentional or uh, manual relation. I'm going to just select making sure I'm in the select tool when I see this cursor, that means I'm in the Select tool. So I can go ahead and select this point now and hold down Control and select the origin. Now both points are selected. If I look in my Properties Manager, I can see uh, I've got point 1 at origin and I've got point 12 selected. And down below I can see I have some options here to add relations. Now instead of having a long list of all the different types of relations at this point, SolidWorks is going to filter those out and only show me the ones that make sense. I'll go ahead and choose coincident. And as you can see, that's going to lock down that point to the origin. 
the two points I have selected now became coincident. Now you may have noticed uh, two of these lines now have become black, but if you look close, the endpoints are not black. What that's telling me is that those lines, um, their location are defined. Anything that's blue is still underdefined. So by this point being blue, I see that the length of these lines are not defined. The location and the fact that that line is ver horizontal and that that line is vertical, that has been defined. If I go ahead and select the Smart Dimension tool, I can select an object, type in a link, length rather, select another line segment, click to place the dimension, type in the value I'd like for it to be, click the Smart Dimension tool again to exit that tool, and I can see that now everything is black. And again, in the status bar, I can see fully defined. I am still in editing sketch mode as well. Now, if you're not seeing this bar down here, you might try the view drop down and make sure status bar is selected. Now at this point I have a fully defined sketch. I'm ready to create my first sketched feature. So now by either pushing the sketch button or by selecting exit sketch in the confirmation corner I can go ahead and exit that sketch. Now holding down the middle mouse button I can go ahead and rotate a little bit to get a perspective on the 3D model that's about to be created. By switching to the features toolbar, I can see the ones that are not grayed out are valid at this point with what we've already got. I'll start with an extruded boss base. And SolidWorks asked me either select a plane on which to sketch the, um, the cross section for this or use an existing sketch. I'll use an existing sketch and immediately we'll see some 3D visual feedback there. I can drag that handle to define the depth of this 3D object or I can define it here by typing in an amount. If I hit enter the preview will update. If I select the check mark to accept the feature is complete. Now here you'll also notice that these features as I create them will be added chronologically in the feature design tree. I can do a slow double click and rename that. And you'll notice as you become more familiar with SolidWorks that renaming these features is often beneficial later in the design process. Now in the heads up toolbar I can select this drop down and jump to either a right view or an isometric view for example. Now the next type of feature we're going to look at, that was a sketched feature. Now I want to look at an applied feature. A fillet or a chamfer is an example of applied feature. So I'll select the feature button and in the property manager again I'll get some feedback what to do. First thing I need to do is select the edges. In the items to fill it, we'll start seeing some feedback there. Edge 1, edge 2, edge 3. Oh, I selected the face that time, so it got all of those edges. I'll go ahead and right click and delete that selection. Now, if you've got full preview selected here, as you select these edges, you'll see a preview. I can also go with a partial preview and just see the first one I selected. Now if you're not seeing a preview at any time in SolidWorks, you can be sure it's about to fail. You're doing something wrong or you're missing um, an option that you have to select first. The next thing to do is to define the radius of this fillet. I'll define it to be 0.25 inches. Hit enter, we'll update the preview. Hit the green check either there or there to accept. Pretty simple. Now at this point I've got some model geometry so I've obviously got some new planes. Now each one of these planes is valid for sketching and is therefore valid for a sketched feature. So I'll right click on this face 
and among the options I have is to start a sketch. That same familiar button we saw in the sketch toolbar. And now again, I'm immediately put into editing sketch mode and the sketch tab of the property manager is activated. I'll select the circle tool this time. Click, release, click again to define that circle. Now one thing that's worth pointing out, if I push the circle button again to exit that tool, this plane that I'm sketching on is infinite. This face that I selected to define the plane is only representative of that plane. So what I need to do at this point is use the dimension tool to give this line by clicking the circle, click again to place the dimension, one inch, enter, and exit the dimension tool. Now it's still blue, it's still underdefined. What do I need to do? Well the size is obviously defined, but the location is not. In this case, I'll define the location of this line, uh, circle by using a center line. The center line is found um, under the drop down of the line tool. Center line. And now by hovering my cursor over this vertex of those two edges, an automatic relation will be applied. An automatic coincident. The beginning of this center line is coincident to that vertex. And again, the end will be coincident to that vertex. And if I exit the line tool, we'll see that that construction line is black. It is fully defined. Now I can hold down control, select the center of the circle and the new construction line and add a relation. We'll add a midpoint relation this time. And if I select to accept, we'll see that that sketch is now fully defined and all black. And again, notice the green flags there that represent the relations that have been added, either automatically or manually. Now I can exit this sketch. I'm automatically moved over to the Features tab. SolidWorks just assumes it's going to keep this, uh, this sketch selected. If I select out here in space, we'll see it turns gray. If I select on this sketch, it turns blue. SolidWorks is going to keep that selected when we exit a sketch and move you to the features toolbar. It's just assuming you probably want to do something with that sketch. So I will create an extruded cut with that sketch. By having it pre-selected, SolidWorks automatically shows me a preview of what that extruded cut is going to look like. I can define this cut by giving it any parameters or I can define this cut by through all, up to next, up to vertex, and so forth. For this one, I'll do through all. Select to accept, and we can see that it's fast and accurate creating model geometry in SolidWorks.